so of course I've spoken a lot today uh, and thank you so much for bearing with me so far. So now let's actually uh, see some of these things in action, right? So the best way to actually, and this is just a, a plug for what Swagger Hub is, right? So as I mentioned before, Swagger Hub is an API design and documentation platform. It's built for teams. Uh, so you can actually design interfaces and actually accelerate it, tie that uh, definition into different parts of your life cycle. Uh, and when I say different parts of your life cycle, I actually mean it because we actually have out of the box integrations with source control hosts, API development platforms, API management platforms, uh, web hooks, all sorts of things. So it really helps teams, especially enterprises, uh, scale their API development. So uh, the best way I can actually showcase uh, all the things which we mentioned of the value of the definition-driven approach is by taking a demo scenario. Uh, so in this uh, example, let's say that you know we in a fictional in the fictional Star Wars universe, you know, in the galaxy far, far away, a uh, long time ago, uh, we actually work in a company called the Dart Corporation. And the Dart Corporation has been around for a long, a long time, for hundreds of years. And they have a mix, uh, have a legacy, have, have a mixture of legacy APIs. Uh, specifically, there's a Star Wars API which we found online. And um, we also, moving forward, we want to build uh, modern APIs for. You know, we know that there's a changing ecosystem, and we want to build more modern web APIs. So our objectives really is to generate the definition from an existing legacy API for the Dead Star. Uh, and finally, for moving forward, we want, also wanna create a new API that allows you to get information from say all the employees of the Dead Star. So it's of two specific objectives, all of which tie into the definition. So in objective one, which is having a legacy API, we will be actually taking an API and using Swagger Inspector, we will be generating the definition. And the definition-driven approach, we will be taking uh, for, for, uh, for the new APIs moving forward, specifically the HR API, which I showed in the previous slide, we will be using Swagger Hub to design the definition, uh, document the API, and simultaneously generate the code. And we will actually push that, AP push that uh, API definition into testing as well as virtualization platforms. So let's get started right now. So I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, so this on, on my screen, you will be seeing the Star Wars API. So you can you guys can actually check it out. It's a pretty cool uh, uh, website called Swappy. Uh, Swappy, uh, Swap API, uh, Sw Star Wars API. Uh, and that, and essentially you can, uh, you can uh, explore the Star Wars universe using this API. So let's say for example, So you can go to inspector. Uh, and inspector, as I said, is our free tool over here. And then on, this is where we can actually go in and see inspector. And, insp and in inspector, what I'm gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna be, uh, first of all, exploring this API. What does this API do? What does this endpoint do? And finally, my objective is to generate the definition. So for the Star Wars API, I'm gonna be generating the definition. So this is the resource and it's, if I'm correct, it's uh, people slash. <laughs> it's people slash. I'm going to select four because four gives Dart Vader, who happens to be the CEO. So there you go. Four is the C. The four is Dart Vader's information. You get all of his information: height, uh, mass, etc. Uh, and from here, uh, I can also, for example, tie get information about planets. Right, so if I do planets, I can actually get the Alderaan planet over here. Uh, and what I can do is now I can, you can see from my history, I have a, a clear path on all the points in my history, right? So from here, I can actually go in and create, uh, add them to a collection if I want to. Or create an API definition. Oh, I realized I didn't log in. So over here, I can select this, select this, can, uh, and from here, I can add them to a collection. So I can do create a new collection and .co. 
And from here, from here I can select this and create an actual API definition. So what I just did is I based on my request, which I've uh, done from my history, I've created a collection uh, I've combined them together. And then um, with just a click of a button, I'm now creating a definition which opens up in Swagger Hub. And so I can say star or example, <laughs> change this under my name, import. And now I'm in the process of importing my definition. And there you go. You, we actually just generated the API definition from, uh, from that endpoint. It combines both those re re requests together. Uh, and so it, with just a click of a button, we just did this. Uh, traditionally, how you would have done it is by using uh, something like open source tools uh, where you have to add code annotations manually to different parts of your API. Uh, over here, you're just abstracting that entire process. So this is Swagger Hub, by the way. Um, I'm going back to uh, Swagger Hub over here. Right, and this is the Swagger Hub interface. On um, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, Swagger Hub is the API design and documentation platform. It's built by the same team behind Swagger. Uh, on uh, over here is where you can actually access all the APIs which you've either created or which you've collaborated on. And on the left are the organizations or teams which you belong to. Um, you, if anyone's interested in taking a deep dive into Swagger Hub, we do a regular Swagger Hub 101, which is uh, I believe bi-weekly. Um, but for now, in this specific uh, example, let's understand. It looks like my screen is stuck. Create a new API. Yeah. And over here, I'm going to be, say, creating an API in uh, version 3.3. .3. Right. So let's do a blank API. And version is 1.0.0. .0. The title of this API, I'm going to be uh, setting it to API and giving it a basic description, right? You can set the visibility to public over here. Uh, auto mocking, you can actually mock from the definition itself. Swagger Hub supports that. We're going to set that to off. And finally, I'm going to set the organization to smarter software. And this just now takes me into the blank page where I can start defining my API. So notice that of course, over here on the left is where I start designing the API and we're designing this in the latest standard, which is open API specification 3.0. We also support 2.0. And on the right is where you can start visualizing the API. So over here, let's, if I want to start typing, I can actually start typing the um, endpoint. So I'm creating an HR API database. And notice that there's actually an auto, uh, an auto fill. So it actually intelligently suggests what I need to be typing the next sentence. It actually gives me all that information, which is pretty cool, right? So notice that as I'm typing as well, if my, if my API is not validated, is, is not correct uh, structurally based on the open API standards, I actually get errors on the right as well. And I can actually see that there's feedback given by the editor that allows me to understand what this API is supposed to do. So uh, over here, I'm not going to copy paste instead of instead of uh, so I know we have we're short of time. So I'm just going to be copy pasting um, the, the entire API. Click save over here. And for those of you interested, this is a public API, which you can go to Swagger Hub anytime and access right now. And notice that, you know, uh, I have essentially I have two, uh, one resource called uh, collection called employees, and I have two operations under them get and post. Right. So over here now I can do a couple of things uh, in Swagger Hub. One is, you know, we want def definition driven approach is all about communication. So on Swagger Hub, you can actually invite different teams. Um, so we have architects and again, Swagger Hub is a collaborative platform, which you can come, you can invite people uh, into your teams from the, set from the settings of Swagger Hub and put them into different categories uh, with the right permissions. So over here I'm inviting architects, developers, 
documentation writers, the governance team, and I can give them different permissions. For example, the development team, I don't want them to touch the definition. I would rather have the architects touch the definition. And the development team can only give me feedback using the Swagger Hub comments feature, or they can essentially view the API as well. And of course, they can go in, they can give us feedback anytime. Please add new edits. Right, so you can actually give feedback using Swagger Hub's comments, comments feature. And we've just added all of those different team members to Swagger Hub. So from here now, let's start going into the, 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 the documentation phase, right? So automatically Swagger Hub, from the definition, you're generating the Swagger UI. This is the interactive, beautiful documentation, which you're seeing over here. And you can actually try it out depending on, um, uh, depending on uh, whether or not you have a backend service already configured. So um, you can actually execute uh, requests in the definition, in the documentation itself. So this makes it completely interactive. And again, it's, it's coming auto automatically generated from the definition. You can also generate code. So we have client SDKs as well as server stubs. Um, we're, uh, we're pushing that client SDKs and server stubs in over 30 different languages. Uh, you can see that over here in another example as well. Right, so over here, if you go over here in the Star Wars example, you can see that we have over 30 different types of client SDKs and server stubs, which you can click and then generate, uh, which automatically generates the code for you. Let's go back to the SmartBray HR API. So we've come from uh, the plan of the API. We've designed the API using Swagger Hub's design interface. Uh, we can actually automatically generate the documentation which you can host as well, uh, uh, either on, on the cloud on Swagger Hub or within your own internal servers. Um, and we can also generate code uh, for Swagger Hub, from Swagger Hub, either from, uh, uh, for client SDKs or server stubs as well. Now from here, what we can do is actually import this uh, API into uh, to testing platform called Ready API. So remember, remember definition-driven approach is all about accelerating different phases of the life cycle. So from your definition now, let's start generating some test cases. So this is Ready API. I hope everyone can see my screen. And from here, I'm gonna click on new project, description file. Uh, specifically, it's an open API definition. We import it. And from here, what I'm gonna do is get the Swagger JSON file. So we're gonna be hitting it to the Swagger Hub public API. So I'm just gonna change the URL. And there you go, I just imported my project and this is the Swagger Hub Smart Bear HR API, which I just created. And you can see all the different resources and endpoints which I've just created from the, from the definition itself, right? So there's the get method and the post method and I can ex expand on that and I can see all of them over here. So from here, I can generate test cases. So I can go over here and click generate test suite and I can generate my test cases automatically from my resources, from my operations, or I can also generate a word, right? So I can actually virtualize my endpoints. So let's do this. I just generated the word over here. And now I'm in uh, service V on the, you can see that over here. Let's see. And from here, what I can do is using service virtualization, I can actually start virtualizing my APIs endpoints as well. So again, this is, I took a definition, I've developed the API using CodeGen, I've documented the API using the Swagger Hub uh, Swagger uh, uh, visualization. I'm now putting it into, into Ready API to generate tests and now gen I just generated a virtu uh, virtual instance. Um, so now over here, what I can do is I can, I can base, there, there are two operations over here, get and post. I can actually go in and edit my responses. So let's take an example over here. I'm editing the, I'm adding some dummy data. So over here, I'm adding some dummy data, JSON data. I've just added a hello world uh, dummy JSON data, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I just started the word, word server. 
I just started my work. Uh, and it's, it's, it tells me that it's available on localhost 80, 8088. So let's go back over here. Let's do 8088. And we know that the endpoint is employees, right? Because the employees is the endpoint. And there you go. You're actually now seeing live uh, uh, the dummy data, which I just created in my virtual instance. So what I just did is I took a definition, I took a plan first. We then went into Swagger Hub, generate the definition. Uh, from the definition, we added some, we added some collaborators on Swagger Hub, uh, gave them the right permissions. Uh, let me just open up Swagger Hub so you guys can see. Yeah, I gave them the right permissions to uh, and added them to my API. Uh, I then showed uh, showed you how I can show the use the Swagger UI. I hope everyone can see my screen for the Swagger UI, um, where you can now go in and interact with various endpoints. Um, we then generated code using the Swagger code gen, and again, all of this is done in Open API 3.0 uh, on Swagger Hub. And from here, I'm taking this definition and importing that into my testing platform called Ready API, where I generate test cases as well as virtualize the API's backend. So I'm actually giving some dummy data so my backend team as well as my frontend team can start working on this API. This is a very, very high level demo, of course, but my hope is that it shows you the power of how definitions can be used in every single part of your life cycle to really abstract a lot of that information or the configuration which you would be doing in those life, in those phases otherwise. Uh, of course, like from Swagger Hub, you can actually, this is just version one. So you can, as your API updates, you can actually add another version like version 2.0 uh, and do the same exact thing. Like you can make changes to this API. You can refactor those changes automatically in the Ready API. So this, this, this way it ties into the entire life cycle of your application. So we've, we've reached the end of our webinar right now. Uh, let me go back over here. So my hope is uh, we've, uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we've touched on uh, the importance of definition-driven uh, development, and we see how like real-world applications can actually benefit from that use uh, based on the three trends which we've seen. And also, I've showed you how uh, the definitions can touch on every single part of your life cycle. Finally, we, we took a deep dive, saw how the definitions can actually help in real life uh, using uh, with, uh, the demo scenario which we set up. Uh, and finally, towards the end, we actually took a definition and actually went all the way till the testing and the virtualization phase. Uh, we also showed you Inspector, which allows you to um, uh, generate open API documentation from existing APIs.